Statistics have proven that some of the biggest health challenges we face today are problems brought on by metabolic risk factors such as high blood pressure, cholesterol imbalances, high fasting blood sugar, and obesity. At the same time, history has proven that these issues have only become significant problems in the past 25 or so years. What is it that's prompting deadly diseases such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, heart disease, and overall cognitive decline over this period? Let's take a look at some statistics pointed out by Dr. Robert Lustig. In the past 25 years, the average American's weight has increased a pound per year, resulting in a 25 pound total. This coincides with adding 200 to 300 calories per day to average nutritional intake. The fact that this huge increase in nutritional intake does not correlate with a large energy demand increase or equal increase in energy output means that the system that regulates this ratio is not functioning properly. On average, a diet that increased around 250 calories in the past 25 years would be made up of an increase of 210 calories from carbohydrates and only 40 from fat, which is equal to about 4 grams of fat and a whopping 52 grams of carbohydrates. From this, we can see that the huge increase in weight gain and metabolic disease correlates directly to a large increase in the consumption of carbohydrates, many of which have been in the form of various types of sugar. Sugars come in many forms, whether monosaccharides like glucose and fructose or disaccharides like sucrose. All forms of sugar are in the category of carbohydrates and are broken down to produce energy for systems in the body. They are consumed in massive amounts all over the globe without any consideration or knowledge of the harmful effects. Let's dive into what it is about the excess amounts and metabolism of these different types of sugar that is slowly disrupting our metabolism and becoming a detriment to our health. One of the biggest issues with excess consumption of sugar is that there's a large increase in sugar molecules binding to proteins, fats, and amino acids in a process called glycation. Our DNA provides information that strings together amino acids into unique three-dimensional proteins that carry out specific tasks such as regulating body processes, guarding against infection, and making up the form and shape of almost all structures throughout the body. These functions are determined by the shape of the protein, which is achieved through the folding of its structure. Glycation, or the process of renegade sugars binding to proteins, results in the deformation of proteins and becomes what is known as an AGE, or Advanced Glycation End Product. When these proteins become misshapen through glycation, they not only become much less functional, but attach to other proteins nearby and become a source of increased free radicals, leading to the destruction of tissue and damage to DNA. Now, small amounts of glycation are inevitable and increase slightly with age, but research has shown that glycation is hugely amplified with excess amounts of sugar intake and can be associated with kidney and vascular disease, diabetes, and overall cognitive decline. Shockingly, this glycation process can be visibly noticeable and can manifest as signs of early aging. When the proteins that make up the structure of the skin become glycated and misshapen by sugars, skin sagging, wrinkles, and loss of radiance occurs. We've talked about sugars as a whole, but let's break down a specific monosaccharide that provides the sweet taste of fruit, which most people consider a healthy choice, fructose. Fructose can be defined as a substrate that upon ingestion is exclusively metabolized in the liver and presents chemical problems a description that also defines the word poison. There are a variety of ways fructose negatively affects metabolism, and unlike other carbohydrates, all of these effects originate in the liver, where fructose is broken down. As a result of this liver or hepatic metabolism, fructose does not trigger the normal response that other carbohydrates do. There is no immediate rise in blood sugar, therefore an insulin response is not triggered. And as a result, the hormone leptin, which communicates to the brain that nutrients have been ingested, is not produced. Regardless of the calories ingested from fructose, feelings of hunger are never satisfied and satiety can never be reached. This is why when soda is ingested, which is one of the biggest providers of fructose in a western diet, the calories are in addition to daily caloric intake, not in substitution for other calories. This along with the fact that all sugars activate sweet receptors that trigger dopamine production in the brain, makes it hard for anyone to avoid these fructose-sweetened beverages. The hepatic metabolism of fructose also differs from glucose metabolism in its byproducts. 
Through the process of hepatic de novo lipogenesis, over 30% of fructose consumed is converted and stored as fat in the liver. In addition, during the conversion process, detrimental byproducts are produced such as uric acid, which is known as a key factor in the development of a life-threatening disease called gout. This production of uric acid also lowers the production of endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which aids in the production of nitric oxide, a key factor in keeping blood pressure regulated. Not to mention fructose is seven times more likely to produce the advanced glycation end products we previously discussed. The consumption of sugar can definitely be a tough habit to break, but it's a crucial turn to take on the road to improved health. For more information and other information on low carb ketogenic diets, check out other videos on the channel. As always, more videos are on the way and feel free to leave comments about what videos you might like to see in the future. Until next time, Keep going against the grain.